Now let's discuss the last set term in the PID controller. Derivative control. We can also call it D control. So for D control, the control signal is proportional to the derivative of the system error. So KD is called derivative gain. main purpose to introduce the proportion, the D control is to improve the stability. It can also speed up the transient response and also reduce the overshoot. In general, we do not use the D controller alone it is usually to get used together with the P controller. So we have the PD controller. The reason why we do not use the D controller alone is because it does not provide the desired end information. For example, if you consider in the steady state, the system error is a constant. When the error is constant, if you take the, if the error signal is differentiated, then it becomes zero. Then if the control signal is zero, then the output is zero. Then the output will not track the reference input. Therefore, we have to use P controller or I controller to provide the right information. So the P controller, sorry, the D controller has anticipatory behavior. It means it has the ability to predict the future because the D controller is proportional to the rate of change of the signal. It can predict the trend of the signal One disadvantage of the D controller is that it can amplify noises. We may use the D controller in two different ways. We can either put the D controller in the feedback path or we can put the D controller in the feed forward path. So the advantage of putting the D controller in the feedback path is because if you think of if there is a sudden change in the reference input. For example, if there's a step change, so at this point, the derivative of the function will be very, very large. Therefore, the, the, the sharp 
jump in the Kinchu signal. In this case, sorry, in this case, because the D controller will take, because the step signal will be differentiated at this part. It will give a very sharp response. Then to reduce this undesired behavior, so we can put the D controller in the feedback path. So that it can be embedded in standard controller or it can be embedded in sensor, for example, the tachometer to measure the shaft of the motor speed. Motor speed. Then if we look at the two different structures. So if you find the transfer function from the input to the output, you will find that they have the same characteristic equation. So let's do it. So from R to Y have the same, a different, say the forward path gain. This will be KP plus KI. First, let's do this part. It is a feedback connection. So it's from here to here, it's G, forward path gain, then one minus the loop gain. It's one plus G, K, D, S, and it should be this block, then we put them together, K, P, plus K I S times G one plus G K D S so let me write it in here would be G plus G S K P plus K I S G one plus G K T S then one plus K P Then we multiply S one plus G K D S. So we have S K P plus K I times G. Then we have S one plus G K D S S K P K I S G For this structure, we have S K P S K 
ติดไหมลอส kt i s q u a r e จะช่วยส่งฟังก์ชันไป s kt square plus k p s plus k i and times g and this forward path gain นะครับเป็น loop gain ว่า plus k t s square k p s plus k i g Therefore, if we look at the denominator, so we have. S plus G K T I square plus S K P plus K I. Same here. So we see the two structure at the same. Denominator in their transfer functions. The difference is that they have different zeros. So let's look at the numerator of the transfer function. So for this structure, it will be k p s k i g equals zero. Then we can find All zeros. So here we have k p s square. We have k p s k d s square plus k i g s. If you see for the two different structures, they have the same characteristic equations. It means they have the same. Poles, but different. They have different zeros. Then, by putting the D controller in the feedback path, so we can eliminate excess excessive response to step in the reference input. 